Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by the channel. Now I've got a pretty cool pattern for you today. This one is called the Red Tail Mosquito. Now it's a variant of the California Mosquito, which is still not a real popular fly. Best I can tell, it was created sometime in the 1950s, was very popular in the Sierra Nevada region in the 1960s and 70s. Now the California Mosquito is uh, basically the same pattern, but it doesn't have the red tail. It's got grizzly hackle tail, and a black body with a white rib, whereas the red tail mosquito does have a red tail and it's got a white body with a black rib. Both of them have grizzly tips for a down wing and then grizzly hackle up front. So why does a red tail one have a red tail? Well, probably just because red can be a trigger, kind of like a small hot spot on a dry fly. Now, the only book I found this in is Stetzer's Flies the Best 1000. This wasn't even in any of my Dave Hughes books or Federation of Fly Fishers Pattern Encyclopedia. I did see a few references to it online, but overall it's a fairly obscure pattern, but it's really pretty cool. Not hard at all to tie. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, the red tail mosquito. Pretty simple pattern, but pretty cool looking. I'm gonna tie this on a size 12. It is a standard length dry fly hook. And I'm gonna put down a base of black 70 denier UTC and I'm gonna leave a pretty long tag. It's gonna be our rib. So pull a little bit extra out before you wrap this on. Now take it all the way back to the bend. Okay, and I'm gonna just park this tag under my magnet here and tie in the tail. Red hackle fibers, just a, oh, about eight or 10 of these guys right here. I'm gonna to try to pull them out perpendicular to the, the fiber, or to the, the stem of the, the feather. Sort of keeps the tips in line. So maybe a hook gap, not terribly long of a tail, but it's a dry fly, so it can be a little bit longer. Okay, I'll take a couple of wraps right there and check that position, that's gonna be fine. I'm gonna just use some of this right here as part of my underbody. Now snip off these butt ends up here. Now I'm gonna catch in some white floss. I'm gonna catch it under the front so that I can wrap it down and back, and that way I'll have at least two layers of it. Okay, that should be fine right there, and I'll just wrap this down and back, and you might need to spin it a couple times if it starts spreading out on you. And don't worry if you don't get it real thick and real white, because we're gonna put that black rib through it anyway. Okay, now when you've got it in the back, if you've got a pretty good base, you can let this one get a little bit, you know, flatter on you just to, to make a smoother body. Okay, now catch this floss off up front with maybe two good wraps right here and trim your excess. Now let's counter wrap this black thread, it's our tag end. I'm gonna go ahead and spin it clockwise a little bit in my hands just to try to keep it from laying flat. I want it to be, you know, um, pretty distinct without laying too flat. So maybe five wraps going up, evenly spaced. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine right there. Let's catch this off with a couple of wraps right there. Snip this excess. Now take some grizzly hackle tips. I'm using the same dry fly hackle that I'm using for the, for the hackle. Uh, just a couple of small little tips. It doesn't really matter, I don't think, how you lay them on here. I kind of like them, you know, where they might splay out a little bit, but if you don't get that, I wouldn't worry too much about it. So catch them in about the uh, length of the body. And if they're laying too flat on you, you can put a wrap up underneath them. I think that's sticking up how I like, but they're just a little bit candid toward my side here. So let's see if we can spin this around. Okay, I like those right there. 
Let's go ahead and catch these off with a couple wraps right here. Snip off this excess. Now let's catch in our grizzly hackle. Just size to match the hook. One long dry fly hackle right here. I'm gonna try to catch it in, leave a little bit of that bare stem showing for where my first wrap is gonna be. I'm gonna try to turn it perpendicular to the hook shank so that those fibers will, will lay out. You know, the first few wraps, they're gonna splay out perpendicular to the shank. Might wanna smooth this head out here just a little to give a better base for this hackle. Okay, that looks pretty smooth right there. Now I've got about four inches of this feather, so I'm not going to use my hackle pliers. I'm just gonna to try to get four or five good wraps right here. We'll see how it works. Doesn't always work for me, but sometimes it does. Okay, I think that's gonna be enough hackle right there. Let's go ahead and try and catch this off. Two wraps and then we'll take a look. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine. Let's go ahead and snip this excess off right here, as close as you can get it behind that eye. Okay, now pull it back if you need, just to, to put a few wraps to get your room for that whip finish. Okay, I think we're gonna be fine right there. Let's put the whip finish tool in and we'll see if we have any cleanup we might need to do. Just poke my scissors in here. And there we go. We've got a room for a smallest drop of head cement on here. But that's it, pretty simple pattern, really pretty fun to tie and kind of cool looking. The red tail mosquito. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.